Using this example, I would like to introduce some more Excel built-in functions, especially the if function for logical testing. This problem, as you probably recognize in math, this is called a piecewise function. Uh, for example, if we put our x as our input here, again, I'm going to use the light orange background to represent input, then I would like to calculate the fx function value depending on my x value. However, this is not going to be a straightforward procedure because depending on what x value is, the program or Excel needs to be able to make a decision which of these three equations to use in order to calculate the fx value. For example, if x is smaller than negative 4, for example, x is negative 6, then this should be 0 according to the first equation. If, on the other hand, x equals to 0, then according to the second equation, this should be 0 to the second power minus 3, therefore negative 3. And it could be x is bigger than 6, for example, if x is actually 8, then according to these definition, you realize that um, the function is actually not defined for when x equals to 8. So Excel should be able to display undefined in this case. So obviously, I just did all the reasonings myself, but we need to uh, create this Excel file that it is able to do this kind of logical testing and generate the correct corresponding answer. So for that, we're going to use the if function. Uh, let's do something more straightforward as a practice first. Let me copy these over. Very simple example. Again, let me use light orange as my input and light green as my output, okay? So I'm going to just randomly put in some numbers for my A, B, and C. And I want Excel to answer these three questions. Is A is bigger than B? Or is A is bigger than B and C? Or if A is bigger or equal to B, or A is bigger or equal to C? So I just need yes or no answer in this space here, okay? So how do we do that? So as I said, we're going to use the if building function. For if building function, here again, you get the hints for arguments. The first is going to be a logical test. In this case, we're going to test to see if A is bigger than B. So we're putting A, not the letter A. Remember, this A right here is simply a note. It is not involved in calculation. This number right here is the actual value of a. So we want to see if a value is bigger than b. So that's that completes the logical test. So this logical test will have two possible outputs. It could be true or it could be false. So as you can see, the next argument is going to be what's going to be displayed if the answer is true. So if the answer is true, I am just going to display yes. And then the next argument, if the answer is no, then I'm just going to display no. And as you can see, for this case, the answer is no, because my A is 1, my B is 2. Therefore, A is not bigger than B. Therefore, the answer to this question is no. Let me delete this for now. As you can see, the first argument is the logical test, and the next argument is also required. We need to specify what we want to display if the logical argument is true. So in this case, we said yes. However, the next argument is not required. So you don't have to include that in your if function. Let's see what happens. So in this case, because A is not bigger than B, therefore, the logical test is false. By default, Excel displays false. As you can see, this false is not specified by our function. So let me return that to what we originally had and move on to the next question. The next question, we want to answer yes only when A is bigger than both B and C. So again, we start with the if function, but how do we represent this AND relation? 
we're going to use another building function called the end function. Different program, programming languages, different software could have different uh, methods to specify the end relation. In this case, in Excel, we use the end function. So again, you get the hints. The arguments are simply um, logical testing. In this case, the first logical test is A bigger than B. And then the next logical test is A bigger than C. And if you want to, you can continue adding logical tests to this function. But in our case, this is good enough. So what does this do? This end function will only output true if both arguments are true. If either one of them is false, or if both of them are false, then this end function will output false. So this completes the first argument of our if function. This, by the way, is called a nested function. So we have one function nested in another. So let's continue to build our if function. So if this is true, then we want to, again, displace yes. And if this is false, we want to display no. This completes our if function. In our case, a is smaller than b. It's actually smaller than c as well. So what if we change a to 6? Then both of these two questions now display yes, because a being 6 is bigger than both b and c. However, what if we change c to 7? Then this question now is no, because even though a is still th bigger than b, as you can see here, because a is smaller than c now, therefore, this question, which asks if a is bigger than both b and c, now has to be answered by no. Moving on, this next question. This question should be answered by yes, if one of these two arguments is true, at least. So again, let's start building our if function. If, in this case, because you see the or here, Therefore, we're going to use, you guessed it, an OR function. Again, in the OR function, you can start adding arguments. These arguments are logical tests again. So the first logical test is A bigger or equal to B. And then the next, next logical test is A bigger or equal to C. Again, that completes the OR function, but, it, uh, but our IF function is not complete yet. So again, if it's true, yes. If it's not true, no. So now the answer is yes, because A is indeed bigger than B, even though A is not bigger than C or equal to C. What if we change B to 6? The answer is still yes. Well, this answer has changed to no, because A is no longer bigger than B. However, A equals to B. Therefore, the answer to this question is still yes. Let's do something else. Uh, for example, is A different than B? In this case, again, we start with the same if function. But here, we're going to use the NOT function. The NOT function is similar to the AND and OR function, but it only takes one single logical test as the argument. So in this case, the logical test is A equals to B. And as you probably have guessed it, the NOT function is always opposite to its input argument. In other words, if the in input argument is true, then the output will be not true or false. If the input argument is false, then the output will be true. So in this case, again, we still haven't completed our if function. We still want to display yes if the if function has argument of true. And we want to display no if that's not the case. So as you can see, our answer is no, because in our case, A actually does equal to B. Therefore, in our NOT function, 
this input argument is true, the output of the not function is now false. And if it's false, for the if function, it displays this second part here instead of the yes. What if we change this? We change b back to 2 again, as you can see. Now the answer to this question is yes, because a is different from b. So now we can come back to this original question. So we want to initially guess some number in order to write our function. So this output equals to if the input according to this right here, smaller than or equal to negative 4. Then, if this is true, the display will be the second argument, which is a 0. But what happens if that's not true? If that's not true, we're going to do another layer of if function. If that's not true, we're going to continue to test if this input is smaller than or equal to 0. So if that's true, then the answer will be this raised to the second power minus 3. But what if that's still not true? Then we're going to continue to test it to see if this input is smaller than 6. If that's true, the output will be square root. We have a building function for that. This plus 2. And if that is still not true, it means that the function is undefined. Therefore, we're going to display undefined. That completes this nested if function. So once again, we will first test if x is smaller than negative 4. If that's true, the display is 0 according to this equation. If that's not true, we're, we're not going to give up yet. We're going to continue to test to see if x is smaller or equal to 0. That's included in the next if function. If that's true, we will calculate our output based on this equation right here, x squared minus 3. But if it's still not true, we will continue to test to see if x is smaller than 6, included in the next if function. If that's true, we have a square root function. But if that's not true, then the function simply is undefined. Now, I have just closed off this parenthesis here, so I need to keep putting parentheses until all the colored pairs of parentheses all match. That's it. Let's see how it works. If x equals to negative 6, the answer is 0 because x belongs to this region. If x equals to 0, then the answer is 0 squared minus 3. If x equals to, say, 2, then the answer is 2 plus 2, 4, square root 2. What if x equals to some weird number 5? Then well, it will calculate it accordingly. If you don't like the so many decimal places, you can always decrease that. Three decimal places is nice. But what if x equals to 6? Then the answer is undefined. And that completes this example.